I'm here with Alfonso. Uh, he's the creator of Fable. Uh, I think he, about eight years ago, he tried to, uh, you know, use F Sharp to do web development, which was kind of one of his uh, passion. And what he found was that uh, symmetry between that was not great. And so that's what kind of led Alfonso to actually create Fable. And there's been tremendous support and uh, community, uh, you know, uptake on Fable. So we, we, we always wanted to have him speak at the conference and talk about how he's trying to push the boundaries and making F Sharp uh, even better. So uh, thank you, Alfonso, for joining us uh, today from Japan. Uh, and uh, it's great to have you. So I will hand it over to you. Uh, looking forward to your talk. Thanks a lot, uh, Rice, for the introduction. And uh, thanks a lot for the invitation to talk at uh, Functional Co. Very happy to be here, even if only virtually. But yeah, it's uh, uh, I'm living in Asia for uh, two years now. So very, very happy. And uh, also, uh, working uh, with uh, sometimes with uh, colleagues from India, so yeah, very happy to to be part of the, this great conference. So let's uh, thanks a lot for the introduction. Let's start. Uh, I'll share my screen so we can see. Yeah. So while Anfazo is just sharing his screen, quick mm -hmm. reminder: if you have questions, you can use the Q and A section. I'll be watching over it, and if uh, there's anything important, I will uh, let Anfazo know. Uh, about that, uh, we'll try and uh, keep it interactive a little bit as we go along. He, he likes to uh, not be talking to a screen, so <laughs> we'll, we'll try and keep it interactive and need your help to make uh, that possible. So, yeah, I think uh, over to you, Alfonso. Yeah, yeah, please do, do interrupt uh, because, uh, yes, uh, as uh, yes, I uh, I guess for me and uh, for the other fellow speakers, it's uh, a bit difficult to be talking for a long time uh, just to a screen. So it's uh, great to have some feedback. So any any time that you have a question, just please uh, write and yeah, nice if uh, you are so kind to just uh, let me know. We can uh, pause and uh, answer very quickly. So yeah, we are going to talk today about uh, Fable um, and uh, F Sharp and uh, actually about uh, the next uh, version, which is currently in development of Fable, which uh, we are trying to to go one uh, uh, step further, one step beyond uh, from the current uh, F Sharp to JavaScript compilation. But uh, let's start uh, very quickly with Nariz uh, uh, has already introduced me, but uh, just um, three points as uh, we just said. We, I'm uh, originally from Spain, but I'm living in Japan right now. Uh, I'm uh, uh, my major in college uh, was uh, linguistics, but uh, so I usually say I'm a linguistic by heart and a programmer by trade, but uh, as uh, many, many programmers, uh, I've changed my career and uh, I'm mostly programming now, but I'm uh, very interested in languages and uh, that's probably one of the reasons that I've been working in open source in a compiler. So uh, mostly uh, I'm an f -star developer nowadays uh, and yeah, I'm the creator and uh, main maintainer, you can say, of the Fable project. Uh, I'm going to say uh, also um, a couple of things of the um, companies I'm uh, collaborating with at the moment. Uh, one is the metrics, which is uh, doing a great job uh, using cutting edge uh, fermentation technology to produce uh, red cannabinoids, sorry, uh, that are safe, legal, and effective for health and wellness. So sorry, it's always uh, difficult for me to pronounce that word in English. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, please uh, visit their homepage in uh, themetrics.com. And I'm also collaborating with uh, Child Dal, which is a, a company that also has uh, uh, their uh, action is uh, also also focused in Asia. Uh, Child uh, builds uh, software and systems to drive supply chains in the developing world and in refugee camps. And it uh, has launched the world's first uh, one-hour grocery delivery system in the world's most densely populated city, which is the Dhaka. Uh, but, ma, <laughs> I was going to say close to Bangalore. It's not that close, but yeah, in the, in the, in a global perspective, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's closer. And uh, it's also a uh, child is picked by Y Combinator and the World Bank Wrap. Uh, if you're interested, you can check uh, child.com, which is the website. But uh, if you're interested in the development group and maybe also joining the team, you can check uh, child.tech. Uh, okay, so uh, table is about compiling F Sharp to JavaScript. So let's talk very briefly about F Sharp. Probably you you already know because it was one of the uh, most used functional programming language still and kind of a niche language, but uh, yeah, usually it's, it's uh, known if uh, you're interested in functional programming. In fact, it was uh, uh, normally promoted as the functional first programming language for .NET platform. 
but nowadays they are changing a bit the promotion and uh, they are not insisting that that much in the functional part, they insist in three characteristics. So the first one is that it's robust. Uh, it's also a functional pro uh, programming characteristic because it's aesthetically typed. It has uh, discriminated units which are great to model uh, your domain. And it also has immutability by default as uh, uh, most of the uh, functional programming languages. It's, uh, it's uh, sexing, so it's uh, also important because it has a type inference. So it means that even if it's uh, strictly typed, you don't have to uh, uh, type the types all the time. The, the compiler can uh, infer them for you most of the time. Uh, and also has a terse syntax, so a syntax that uh, it doesn't get you on your way. It, uh, you don't uh, need to, uh, to write the brackets most of the time using white space is enough. And um, uh, it's also, it can be used to write scripts and it has a REPL, uh, so it's very good for prototyping. And uh, it's also a performance language. Uh, there's been a big focus on performance uh, in the last years, both on the f -sharp language and the .NET runtime. Actually, in the, with the latest versions of uh, .NET, uh, many times uh, you can match uh, the performance or uh, even beat uh, of equivalents on the same programs written in uh, Go or Rust, for example. So now let's talk about Fable. What's Fable? Fable is uh, an f sharp to JavaScript compiler. Uh, it's important to mention it's not the only one available uh, for uh, f sharp. Uh, you can also take a web sharper, which is also an f sharp to JavaScript compiler. Um, it's a compiler that supports uh, most of the f sharp core library. We say that it's a battery charge because of this and uh, supports part of the .NET base class library. Uh, one important thing of .NET is that this ha it has this huge uh, base class library that uh, can do uh, many things, and uh, uh, sometimes you don't need uh, external libraries. Uh, but uh, yeah, because it's huge, it's, uh, it's a big undertaking to support all of it. So this is not a goal of Fable, but it, you can, it supports uh, things that uh, you need most commonly to, to write the programs. And uh, it also can support uh, NuGet packages. NuGet is the package system that is used for .NET and f -sharp break, uh, but they have to be Fable compatible, okay? And um, it can also support uh, JavaScript libraries, for example, from NPM uh, through bindings, or uh, you can just use a dynamic programming to just interact with uh, JavaScript. And uh, it has some uh, support for uh, reflection. This is, uh, it's partial, it's not entirely, it's not a big uh, support for everything because we also support uh, tree shaking, which means that uh, the parts of your application that are not being used will, bring, uh, will be removed from the JavaScript bundle. This is very important because in JavaScript, we want to deploy uh, as less code as possible. So it's uh, the, our websites load fast. But uh, it's still, uh, it's interesting because you can, um, uh, let's see here, oops. Uh, Okay, so we have, yeah, so we have pressed like uh, this one, which is uh, a Fable remoting, which allows you uh, through the use of reflection in Fable and uh, uh, the .NET F# -sharp servers, you can just generate automatically an HTTP API out of types. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. And uh, yeah, uh, as I uh, uh, told this already, it's been eight years since the first release. I had to check it out uh, for, for the for when preparing the talk, and I was a bit surprised because time really flies. And uh, there are uh, multiple uh, praise impressions. I don't know of all of them, but I know that uh, there are many companies that are using it for uh, praise that are doing real work in the real world. Uh, one thing that I like to stress is the, the Fable philosophy. This because uh, when, uh, yeah, actually eight years ago, it was uh, uh, very popular to, to have uh, many uh, languages compiled to JavaScript because uh, JavaScript was uh, uh, thought to be not a very good language. This has changed. Uh, JavaScript is uh, quite powerful now, has evolved very quickly. And we have TypeScript, which is uh, like a JavaScript with types if you uh, need static types. So this is not the case anymore. But uh, yeah, back in the, even back in the time, the Fable wasn't born to 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 just because um, uh, thinking that the Java, JavaScript was a bad language that uh, had to be hidden from the developers. Actually, uh, Fable was born out of love of uh, F sharp, both F sharp and the JavaScript ecosystem and community. So Fable, what it tries to do is make F sharp a first class citizen, uh, citizen of the target platform, uh, JavaScript in this case. 
And uh, we try to do that by aiming for good interop with uh, native code and uh, uh, tooling, like uh, for example, tools that are widely used in, uh, by the JavaScript uh, community, like a uh, Webpack. And uh, we also try to find a balance between, between the F-Sharp semantics and uh, having minimal overhead, as we say that uh, we don't want to bundle a, a full runtime. So sometimes uh, if uh, we have to make a sacrifice, um, uh, some, some things in, in F-Sharp uh, or .NET runtime, that, uh, uh, some special behavior that will require to, to wrap things, uh, we try to avoid that. But in general, I think we, after <laughs> many years and many attempts, uh, I think we have a, a good balance. Uh, right now. Uh, talking a bit about the Fable history, what has happened in these eight years. So first of all, I'd like to mention about Panscript, which was a, um, a, another f -sharp JavaScript compiler that existed before. Uh, it had the, the best name ever. Uh, the Panscript used to use uh, something that's uh, a feature of Sharp is code quotations. But at one point, the uh, f compiler service, which is f -sharp compiler used as a library, uh, exposed the internal AST, where AST stands for uh, Absa Syntax Tree. So uh, this was uh, uh, taken by me as an opportunity to, to write a new compiler that I will use the f compiler directly to transform the f AST into JavaScript AST. We had a, a Fable 1, uh, the Fable first version, used uh, a Babel. Uh, Babel was a, a uh, a JavaScript compiler was translating modern JavaScript to old JavaScript uh, because at the at the time uh, not many browsers uh, could support the new JavaScript features. So this was uh, very needed. So this was uh, what a uh, uh, favorite one was uh, using. You can see. Let's uh, let's uh, have uh, a very uh, quick look here. Let's imagine that we have. So imagine that all of these circles they are uh, ASTs. So we have So this is the code and uh, uh, F-Sharp compiler is going to translate the F-Sharp code to, into uh, uh, F-Sharp AST. So this means the parsing and invalidating that the code is valid. Uh, and then uh, we can do the same with uh, Babel. Babel will also Take that the code is valid, but uh, it doesn't make us uh, very strict checking because uh, there is no uh, static typing in uh, in JavaScript. But it was uh, also printing the the final code. So Fable was acting here, so it was translating the AST uh, into Fable AST. What we why would we uh, why do we have a a, a Fable AST? This is because the the F -sharp AST is uh, it's, it's kind of exposed. But it's not uh, uh, it's not actually possible to produce the 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 F -sharp AST. It's only possible to consume. So it means that the, if we want to make some transformation and create new AST, we had to uh, have our own AST. And yeah, this is something that uh, people uh, is, is using and then compile to to JavaScript and then send this to Babel. This happened in Fable uh, in Fable one. In Fable two, what we had is that uh, we had an internal step uh, before it was more or less like a direct, but uh, now we had an internal step here to make some transformations. So this was uh, helpful to, to, to focus on, on Fable ASC itself. And in Babel 3, what we did is uh, remove this uh, Babel dependency. So basically, Fable could uh, uh, just uh, print the JavaScript code directly. And now uh, what's going to happen in, in uh, Fable 4? What uh, are we trying to do now? So what we are trying to do is um, because we have this uh, this work done. So this uh, we have the FSR AST, the Fable AST. We have a some transformation here. So we thought, what if uh, we just add new steps and we can compile to multiple languages? So this is what uh, we are trying to do with uh, with uh, uh, Fable 4. And let's see if uh, we can manage to do that. So as we talk, Fable 2 in uh, the intermediate step, and we have Fable 3, and Fable 4 is adding a uh, new uh, target language. So uh, Snake Island is the code name for the new Fable. 
and uh, we are going to explain a bit how the the, the new fable appear. Actually, it, uh, I'm very happy about that because it was uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, driven by the community. So it was not driven by me. It was the community that started to add these new targets, and uh, they made some uh, some uh, uh, PR, so pull request the uh, fable uh, fable code, so a fable repository. So we decided to try to be more open to these new targets, and uh, we are now trying to change a bit the architecture so to make it easier to to um, uh, target other languages so it started with a uh, uh, which um, uh, he was creating a board game this uh, we're talking about, uh, about a physical uh, board game here but uh, he also uh, wrote uh, an online version using f sharp the game is called crazy farmers you can uh, google it and um, and uh, uh, this this website, which is called Board Game Arena, which offered him to include the game in their website so he could uh, uh, reach a wider audience. But there was a problem because the server only supported PHP. So what did he do? <laughs> he he wrote uh, people, which is uh, an F to F uh, PHP compiler based on Fable, to compile his code to PHP. <laughs> and I think it's it's quite interesting that uh, he found it was easier to create a, a compiler. Uh, just on, uh, rewriting the whole uh, bread in uh, PHP. But actually, yes, uh, uh, using, uh, uh, especially using this community unions, but they're matching and other features that uh, makes uh, uh, writing a compiler actually quite fun. So then later he sent the, the, the PR to integrate this uh, PHP compilation into file. And maybe we can say that this was uh, how the, the new uh, Fable 4 uh, was born which uh, I insist is still in development. And then we also have uh, another contributor who is, uh, who is uh, uh, Doug Brel. Sorry, I forgot to, to mention that, yeah, if you're interested in, in uh, Jeremy Sassan's work, you can check uh, his uh, GitHub profile, which is thinking before coding. Okay, and uh, yeah, and we have uh, Doug Bradley, which uh, is also an F-sharp um, and uh, a favorite contributor. He's the author of the Async uh, Rx uh, library. And uh, he's also an expert uh, Python developer, and uh, he believes that F# -sharp can help make a, a better Python. Actually, he uh, wrote a, a, a Python library which uh, was inspired by F# -sharp. It's called Expre Expression, and this uh, library was uh, uh, meant to enable pragmatic functional programming with Python. But still, uh, there were some some things in, in the Python language that is uh, is uh, made the uh, functional programming uh, difficult to apply uh, to. So now he tried to 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 compile directly F# -sharp to Python using Fable, and uh, this is very interesting because, uh, as you know, uh, Python is the uh, most widely used uh, functional programming in the world. It's as uh, a functional programming, no, uh, sorry, a programming language in the world. And uh, it, uh, this, um, there are many tools uh, and uh, many possibilities for Python developers. And it's, uh, it's great that uh, uh, just by compiling to Python, these possibilities are also open to F-sharp programming. So you, uh, I probably you all know about the, these Jupyter notebooks for uh, data science, for example. The Python Interactive, which is like a rebel, but it's, it's uh, very, very advanced and, and uh, very interesting for prototyping. And we can also do some uh, IoT look, uh, with uh, BBC Microwave, for example. And uh, it's actually, it's, as uh, all the other targets still in development, but it's uh, quite advanced. Uh, we have indeed, there's indeed uh, an uh, OS project that uh, is already using, uh, which is called uh, type uh, BNF. Uh, we can check it here. So yeah, you can uh, take, uh, take a type uh, BNF, which is a, um, a break to 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 uh, yeah to detect errors in um, uh, when parsing uh, languages uh, using a BNF grammar. Okay, actually, I think now now they are compiling to to JavaScript because of some issues. But uh, yeah, this uh, this uh, break used to, to be compiled to Python using Fable Python. And then we have uh, uh, f sharp to Rust as well. Uh, this is also in the making. Uh, this is responsible by NK, which is a long time f -sharp and Fable mysterious contributor. I say mysterious because uh, nobody know uh, the identity of NK. Uh, we only know uh, uh, the GitHub profile, which is NK. Uh, NK also uh, is the one who enabled the um, 
Let's start comparing payable safety compilation, which uh, enabled the payable repo. We are uh, going to have a look uh, at it right now uh, because it was necessary to, to modify, uh, strip some parts of the FSR compiler uh, to make it possible to be compilable by Fable. And uh, also, he, uh, NK maintains an FSR compiler for uh, this being used to improve the incremental compilation uh, for Fable. And um, and Cape starts some work to compile FSR to Rust code through Fable. And uh, what can, can we have with uh, Rust code? Actually, uh, the one thing that uh, you'll, uh, you'll think first is that uh, this can Im improve the performance. It, it probably is true, but uh, we made some, uh, some tests uh, actually because the, the new .NET uh, 6 is uh, quite fast. Uh, actually, .NET can, uh, can run sometimes as, uh, as fast as, uh, as Rust. But the, the most important the thing is that uh, you can uh, um, create, uh, you can uh, generate uh, binary, uh, uh, native binaries uh, that add, are much smaller than uh, the .NET binaries because uh, the binaries they need to include the runtime, so they tend to be quite big. If you need to make some deployment, for example, to uh, a machine in the cloud that uh, yeah don't, uh, doesn't have uh, a .NET uh, uh, install. So yeah, it's, uh, this is um, uh, quite a good alternative. Also, it enables uh, web assembly completion using a WASM pack, which is a, a project to uh, compile Rust code to, uh, to web assembly. So this is interesting because we compile FSR to Rust and then Rust to, to web assembly. Uh, actually, there's, there's already a project uh, to, to put uh, .NET in, uh, in uh, web assembly using uh, this called Blazor. And uh, it's a good project, and uh, you can use it with F sharp through Bolero. But uh, yeah, the thing is that it's it's uh, also again it uh, puts the the whole .NET runtime, so it can it's kind of uh, big. So with uh, this method, you can have a, it's uh, yeah much uh, much lighter. Uh, so we have twenty minutes in. Twenty minutes, perfect. Okay, so yeah, this uh, actually this is uh, the last. The last one for now uh, of the language we are uh, trying to to include for fail for, uh, which is Dart. Uh, Dart probably it was it wasn't very uh, very known language, but uh, then uh, Google developed the Flutter, which is um, uh, is gaining traction of the uh, the most comprehensive uh, cross platform app development solution, and uh, Flutter currently only supports uh, Dart. So yeah, uh, by compiling by using F# to to Dart. Uh, we could uh, uh, make it possible to develop a future app in uh, in Fable directly. And uh, I, I have to say that the, this uh, mobile and desktop development is already possible with uh, in F Sharp using, for example, React Native with Fable, or there are also .NET solutions like uh, Xamarin, uh, Maui, and Avalonia UI. But uh, I still think that the Flutter, everybody, uh, most of the developers that uh, have tried Flutter, they really like it. So I think it's uh, very interesting. Uh, to be able to write uh, f -sharp, um, apps with it. And uh, the thing is that Dart is a language similar to c -sharp and uh, .NET, so uh, many of the challenges to, to compile f -sharp to to this kind of language have, um, have already been met, so I think it's uh, something doable. But there are still many, left, uh, many challenges left, so it's not that easy, but yeah, we are trying to, to make some progress. So let's let's uh, before starting the uh, taking the, the uh, last slides, let's take some um, some demos. So first, uh, I talk about the um, this one here. I talk about, about the repo, so you can try this online. So this is the the favorite repo. Uh, that's actually this. Uh, this is the F# -sharp compiler, which is being compiled to JavaScript, and it's put there. So there's no server here. This uh, uh, host as a static web page uh, in the GitHub. So there is no server uh, doing anything here. Um, you can uh, let's see, for example, this uh, an example from uh, Thomas Petschik, which is creating a spreadsheet that you can use, like uh, you put. Right here, right here, and you say, okay, I want to add B3 plus, oops, uh, B4 
for. And it's going to tell you. So it's a mini Excel uh, in your browser. And it's done with uh, less than, yeah, less than 500 uh, lines of code. And uh, yeah, using um, uh, the UI and also the, 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 uh, the logic. And uh, yeah, you can see some of the features of F Sharp. So uh, very common to the functional programming languages. So we have this uh, pattern matching. We have uh, a current function. So uh, we have the uh, type uh, inference because as you can see here, all the types, you don't have to write them. They are automatically uh, inferred by the compiler. And again, this compiler, this actually is uh, it's operating in the browser. It's not uh, sending anything to the, to the server. We have some uh, uh, custom uh, operators here. So yeah, I'm not uh, going to, to go uh, too deep in the, in the features of F Sharp, but if you're interested, you can go to the repo and you have a tour of F Sharp here that uh, you have some of the, of the main features and, and some examples that uh, you can try, okay? So we talk about uh, this Rust compilation. So I'm going to show you this example. Sorry, you here. Oops. This ray tracer example, okay, which is uh, doing some uh, uh, creating some scene uh, using uh, some uh, geometric figures, and then um, uh, using this uh, ray tracer algorithm to render the scene. Okay, so uh, let's see here. We we are going to make it a bit bigger. We are going to make it a. 1024 uh, times 1024, compile it again. We'll see, we take a bit longer, so over two seconds, because this is actually very CPU intensive, okay? So this uh, uh, code that is, uh, yeah, it's uh, quite intensive. So so you can see that uh, it takes uh, uh, yeah, uh, more than two seconds. It's, uh, it's, not a, um, a, it's not trivial time. So let's go to... So what we see here actually is the same example, but this is going to be translated, uh, uh, compiled to, Java, uh, to Rust, and then using the uh, Wasma uh, pack, it's going to, to be compiled to WebAssembly. So you can see this already done, this, uh, uh, this running on a local server. You can see here that this is this actually is uh, also 1024, uh, uh, but it's reduced uh, uh, to the half the size, so you can have uh, more detail. And uh, as you can see here, it's uh, faster, and uh, it's uh, because it's faster, you can uh, do things like, uh, for example, uh, just writing a small animation, and uh, uh, we are rendering it uh, in different angles because uh, we can have it uh, much uh, uh, not much faster, but uh, yeah, it's this. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, appreciable, so it's uh, always good to to have uh, uh, to be rendered things. Uh, actually, I I I can get the better times uh, here, but uh, because um, right now my computer is uh, is uh, busy uh, streaming this video, it's uh, a bit uh, it's taking a bit longer. But actually, there is also an example here. Oops, no, sorry. Uh, There is also another example here. This is equivalent to, to the example we saw in the REPL, uh, but this is done with um, this one here. Oh, okay. This done. Uh, this was uh, done uh, with a, a version in TypeScript uh, that um, that uh, yeah was in the TypeScript playground. I the, they took it out, but uh, yeah we still have this uh, this version. So as you can see, it's actually this one is. Um, it's taking longer than uh, you see. It's uh, uh, almost uh, four seconds, and uh, we have the 
pale rebel version that is a bit more than two seconds. And then uh, the Rust version that actually, if I uh, make a picture, uh, would have more resources will be close to one second. So yeah, but uh, by using F sharp and Fable, we can get this uh, performance uh, basically with the same code. If uh, you go to the code here, this one is the, the code base, based in the uh, JavaScript sample. It's actually very, very, very similar. If uh, we take this, this is the code generated by Fable. You can check also in the Fable repo. I just copied from there. So you can see the, the code that is generated here. If you check it out, it's uh, very, very, uh, very close. Uh, but it's still, it's, uh, so for example, you can see, uh, so we have this uh, minus in, uh, in F-sharp, we can, uh, we can have these uh, custom operators. So we can use uh, this uh, like uh, multiplying normal integers. Uh, but it's still this faster. Why? Uh, it's difficult to say because it's uh, uh, the JavaScript engines, they have some uh, heuristics. So it's, um, uh, it's not easy to say, uh, to, to know what, uh, what is actually causing the optimization. But uh, one important thing is that um, because the, the the methods in uh, in FRM table they are being compiled as, as just separate functions instead of uh, uh, static or uh, instance members of a class. Uh, these are uh, a great advantage for uh, um, dynamic languages like uh, JavaScript because in JavaScript the runtime always have to check that the prototype actually uh, uh, has this method. But do, when you have a, a model function, this function can be statically linked and uh, this is much uh, easier for the engines to optimize. And you can see here, this uh, the code is basically the same and this is the generated uh, Rust code, okay? It's not so clean because it's automatically being generated, but uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, it's um, how many lines? So we have like, a, yeah out of um, about around 200 lines of, uh, of uh, F-sharp, we can generate this uh, 800 lines of uh, Rust code. So yeah, it's, it's uh, much easier to uh, do it in, in uh, F-sharp and then let people uh, do the boilerplate for you. Uh, let's check, let's check, okay, let's close this one. So we just saw uh, Fable compiling to JavaScript and then compile it to Rust, and then compile it to WebAssembly using uh, using uh, Fable. Um, we are going to check the Python compilation. Ten minute check. Okay, thanks. So this, uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, f sharp script, which is, uh, is, uh, was uh, being done by Stephen Forkman, and uh, it is being used to, to solve Sudokus. So if you know uh, Sudokus, uh, this was a, a very uh, popular pace time, and uh, was, um, uh, was about the generating, actually, if, if you go, it's not in the, in the latest repo, but uh, you can go to Fable repo, don't know, uh, repo two, which is the, the old repo, uh, we still have the example here. And you can see it's the same code uh, plus the UI. So you can uh, have, you can have this here uh, and you can just automatically solve it, okay? So this is the same, oops, uh, the same code, but in a script and um, It's going. Uh, this is something that uh, we are also trying for uh, for uh, Fable for this uh, region compilation, which is uh, instead of uh, uh, just uh, overwriting the whole file, we we just we just uh, uh, put the code in a special region of the code. Uh, this makes it very easy to mix 
they generated uh, Python code with uh, a custom Python code in the same file. And uh, this is uh, good, for example, when you're using um, the Python interactive. And uh, for example, here in Visual Studio Code, we can use these comments to generate cells. So I'm going to use. So as you can see, this this uh, uh, value here, this puzzle, it's automatically available in uh, in the Python interactive, and we can just ins inspect it, uh, the values, and uh, we have it here, and we can even use use pandas. Uh, if you know it's a, it's a very popular Python library for uh, data science. You can use uh, because uh, this uh, uh, translates to uh, directly to Python uh, types. Uh, we can uh, very easily convert the pandas. Oh, okay, here. So we have this, and uh, even also we can have the solution. Uh, no, sorry. So again, this is the get first solution here. Is converted in uh, into Python. Uh, just in this case, uh, we are changing the the case uh, to what a uh, to a snake case, which is uh, what a Python understands. So we can do the same here with. Uh, so with this, for example, we can just. Uh, very easily uh, certify that the, the 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 solution is right because it sums uh, all the rows. They sum uh, forty five, which is what we expect of a properly uh, solved Sudoku. And uh, we can also transpose this and see the result is the same. And because the 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 pandas data frames they allow you to, mm -hmm, uh, to easily get some subgrid. We know that the, the Python subgrids, the uh, uh, three, okay, three times three, they should sum also 45. And we see that they do. And now uh, we can uh, get any, uh, so we can get any any subgrid uh, three times three, and uh, yeah, there was some forty five. So we can uh, uh, certify that the solution is valid here. Okay, and the last one I can uh, I want to show you is the. The flutter compilation. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, right now it only it's uh, only available for very very simple uh, demos like this one. But uh, yes, it's a, a great first step. And uh, as you can see, this the Elmis model of uh, writing uh, uh, UI uh, apps. That actually is very popular in uh, Fable apps, and uh, here in this case, this the the, the simple sample with this uh, just a, a counter, and uh, we just have a um, update function, a view function, and a model. So and a message. So, so when we send a message, we just have a, an immutable function here, the update function that is going to update the model, and uh, with this. Uh, so should start the compiler. We have the, okay, we have it here. Okay, so you can see here that the, uh, this uh, Dart file is empty, but uh, well, this server, is, uh, again, is uh, going a bit slower because uh, my CPU is uh, a bit busy at the moment. I should um, close a few things. Okay, 
So the start array is going to generate the code. The code is generated. So then we can uh, compile this. Uh, we can let a plotter kick in and generate uh, the Android application for us. So you can see here, this is going to just create a button that uh, dispatches when it's being clicked. It's going to dispatch the increment message and it's going to just uh, add one to the, to the model. I want to uh, also, uh, the last slides are about the motivation to, to have this uh, multi-language compilation. So, uh, yeah, basically, it's, it's just um, we can say that the main motivation. Okay, it's uh, it's done. So let's uh, check it very quickly. Okay. So yeah, it's so on here. We can inspect the the. Uh, everything is a uh, very good tooling for Flutter. So we can just click. As you can see here, this is going to increase. If we change, if we, for example, say we are going to decrement, decrement, and uh, hot reload. Now, when we push the button, it's going backwards. And may we say, uh, okay, increment that, do it. Uh, plus 10 every time. So, oops, uh, we got to hold reload. Okay, so again, now it's just incrementing by 10. So we have this uh, nice piece of uh, plotter and uh, hold reloading uh, with uh, a fable, uh, an F-sharp fable app. This is quite nice. Uh, so yeah, it has to finish very quickly. So why compile to multiple language? So, because we can, because uh, this is actually one of the of the reasons to do many open source projects. Because we can, or uh, actually, because we want to know if we can, if we can, right? So we saw an opportunity. Uh, the community saw an opportunity and tried to do that. Actually, the F Sharp community always uh, tries to expand F Sharp beyond .NET because, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, F Sharp developers usually they love the language and they want to to make it available in other places, not only in .NET. And I, I like to think of uh, language as a platform. So uh, yeah, as we saw, JavaScript is the web platform. Uh, Rust is becoming a, a system platform. Also, uh, it's intertwined with a web assembly platform as well. Uh, Python is, uh, is uh, very good for data science, for example, and uh, machine learning. So yeah, it's, uh, when you, you enter a language, so you enter, uh, you get more facilities and also uh, communities tend to gather around the language. So uh, entering a, a new language is also entering a new community. So uh, many people say that uh, we should use the best tool for the job and this is absolutely right. But the problem is that it's not trivial to transition to another ecosystem. We have the new language, we have new tooling, we have new ideas. Uh, tooling, tooling, <laughs> I wrote here actually, yeah, many, many new tools to learn. Uh, and, and sometimes learning the basics of a uh, uh, programming language is easy. But mastering is hard. This is because there are many uh, nuances in the language that are not uh, in the syntax directly. Uh, you need to learn how to write idiomatic code. You need to learn different APIs to do the same things. For example, for regular expression, I love regular expression, but every time that you learn a new language, you have to learn uh, how to do the same things in different ways. So, and uh, you go back to other languages and you have to relearn again. So it's it's uh, it's uh, a bit crazy. So yeah, I think it's good to to have uh, an opportunity to to write some cross-platform uh, code. So the same way that the Flutter is a way to write uh, cross-platform apps, uh, because uh, being able to cross language, uh, do cross language completion can help uh, lower the uh, barriers to entry. And uh, I think it's totally fine if uh, it fail, for example, it's just a way to, to, to help developer to transition to, to a new ecosystem. I know of uh, uh, several cases of uh, developers that they, they were .NET, f -star developers, and they, they try Fable. And uh, then they 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 got involved in the in the front end development and uh, yeah with uh, JavaScript and TypeScript and uh, at one point they decided okay I want to 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 do things directly in TypeScript or, or JavaScript with the, the JavaScript tooling and I think this is totally fine I'm very happy that uh, that uh, Fable helped them to to make this uh, this step it's not that the, 
that uh, Fable tells you that you need to do everything in F sharp because the F sharp is the best language in the world. I think F sharp has uh, some uh, uh, good things and also maybe not so good things, but uh, yeah, <laughs> when it becomes your comfort zone, it's uh, it's good to to be able to to use this comfort zone to to compile to uh, and enter other areas, explore other areas. So what I want to say that that um, the fail philosophy is uh, to write to try to build bridges, but uh, not uh, don't impose anything on anybody. Uh, I think it's a way to, to learn from others because if you can uh, uh, if you if you cannot leave your ecosystem, you won't learn from anybody else. But if you can leave, uh, even if it's in this way, there's compiler, it's an opportunity to learn, but also an opportunity to say true you, to yourself. So if you like functional programming, if uh, you like this uh, this way of coding, uh, you can still do it even if uh, uh, you try a new language. So that's all from my side. Thanks, uh, big thank you. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can check the, the fable.io site. If you're uh, on Twitter, you can uh, follow Fable Compiler or uh, Alfonso GC Nunez. Sorry, this may be a bit more complicated. This is my Twitter handle. So thanks, everybody. Uh, I know if Ooh. there are questions. All right, uh, thanks, Alfonso. That was great. Uh, very interesting demos, I must say. So thank you for those. Uh, I know we ran out of time, but uh, there is uh, one quick question from Manoj. We can probably yes, take that. He's basically saying very excited excited uh, for Fable 4. When is it coming out? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the question. So yeah, it, it's, uh, the thing is that it's an, an open source uh, press, so it depends on the, on the, on the contributors. So it, it's a bit, uh, the good and the bad things that it's, it's a bit out of uh, my hands. So uh, I'm, I'm taking care of uh, that compilation, but the RAS, Python, and PHP, this, uh, they are different contributors. So yeah, it depends on their time. So uh, we'd like to, to make it uh, uh, come out this year and at least, uh, uh, but this is a real an alpha version, but uh, yeah, some alpha or beta version uh, in, the, in the next uh, couple of months, but uh, yeah. It's uh, hopefully, hopefully we can have something this year. And I see there's another question. Are, are, are the business to different languages coming out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's also a, a, a tricky question. We had uh, something for TypeScript to compile TypeScript uh, bindings to F sharp. It's not uh, always uh, easy because uh, uh, the type systems are differently. So we have a tool that is called TS to Fable. Uh, so yeah, there, 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 there are some talks about uh, Dart uh, because there are also some, uh, some tools are for uh, Dart code introspection in Dart. So maybe we could use that. It's it's not always uh, super easy, but uh, yeah, I would be great if we have some way of uh, of compiling uh, of have some uh, automatic binding uh, uh, generation in uh, in uh, um, TypeScript at the moment. Uh, TypeScript to to Fable. Uh, to F sharp, uh, it's kind of uh, semi-automatic. So we have we use a tool to generate the the bulk of the windows, and then we usually require some manual tweaking. But for example, you have uh, Fable.browser, which is a library to provide your bindings to the browser APIs, and uh, yeah, and uh, there are other projects maintained by the community to 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 do this. Uh, uh, yeah, to do this kind of um, um, there there is uh, Kerams, uh, a user that was. Uh, if you take the the uh, Twitter of uh, Fable compiler account, is uh, retweeting this. But yeah, uh, he is um, uh, publishing some bindings recently. So yeah, sometimes if there is an interesting uh, JavaScript library, uh, one uh, of the users in the community uh, they create some bindings, so you can use it uh, maybe also in a more uh, idiomatic uh, extra way. So for example, we have this uh, Feliz API from uh, Zaid. Zaid Ayak is a very big contributor of uh, Fable community. That is used to to write the React application using Fable. I think uh, we slightly overshot the time, but uh, yes, Alfonso, again, thanks a lot for uh, the wonderful introduction to uh, Fable and all its uh, great demos. So I'm sure people will be excited to, uh, you know, hopefully contribute, but at mm -hmm. least uh, start, uh, you know, using some of the cool features that you have. I'll certainly uh, be looking to check the, out the website that you talked about. 